So we have the last two uh, sessions left, and then we move on to uh, Hall 1, which is at level 4, because we have three major sessions over there. So the last two sessions, uh, uh, the first one uh, being the art. Uh, the topic is the art and science of project leadership, how to deliver complex projects efficiently and in time. And the speaker we have for this is Mr. Rakesh Agarwal, Head of Product Management from Tally Solutions, an entrepreneur and global product leader with diversity of skills that came from four years of startup and 14 years of corporate experience with product companies. Please put your hands together as I invite on stage Mr. Rakesh Agarwal, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. How's it going? Yeah? So thank you for being here. You know, I think I have a pleasure to have audience who are here and waiting for Thank such a long time and whole day. I'm, I'm sure the evening will be great as well. Um, what I want to do is, so I don't have a deck. It's so good news, right? So you got to listen to me and not watch what is there behind. So what I'm going to talk about is art and science of project leadership for complex project. And there are two, two key words there. One of the key word is art and science, and the other key word is complex project. So what do we mean by complex project? Right? A complex project is something which has a very large scope. It requires a lot of resources. It requires a lot of time. Is that the complex project? Correct? Something like that will be there. That's, that's what we mean by complex project. What I mean, for me, what complex project means, and Again, this is a definition which each one of us can have, which is slightly different. For me, a complex project is something where you have an idea. You have an idea which will fundamentally change the life, change the life of the customer, change the life, the way we think about the future. A uh, couple of those complex projects, if you could see an example, is Google search, iPhone, a man on space, right? Still not happened, but people are trying, right? And, and companies like us have changed the way SME used accounting. So fundamentally, when you think about projects which are of that nature, they are to be dealt differently. They have to be dealt with different care because as the idea matures, you have to keep on cross-checking, recalibrating whether the outcome is possible or not. You don't start with a defined scope. You don't start with a definitive scope and timeline. You start with an objective that this idea, can it create a maximum impact? So that's the, that's the meaning for me as a complex project. It could be different for different people. But if you are worked in that environment, I, I have worked in that environment for the last 20 years. So it has been a great journey for me. And I thought I will share those uh, lessons learned from, from that journey. You can take those lessons into your existing form of complex projects that you might have. And some of the lessons that I, that I learned, and I would like to share those journey with you. So first, when you start a complex project, you don't start a large team. Never, ever start with a large team. You need to start with a very small team which is convinced with the idea. You have to build a set of people who are having that highest degree of conviction for whom you are trying to solve. Why are you trying to solve? What are you trying to solve? What solution that you have in your mind? And that needs to be churned initially. And that needs to churn very fast. If your leadership team is ready to take on the project, I think the expansion and with the speed and efficiency the whole project will be run will be completely be different. So one lesson learned through my life is when you talk about complex project, start small. Don't start big. Right? Don't think of huge number of people. Make sure you define the boundary conditions early. Why, why not? Once you have done that, is you get into the next stage where you start expanding the project. Right? You, you want to design what you want to do. Right? And there are my three tips. My experience is those three tips are, first, make a list of 
all the items that typically all of us do, right? List of items to be solved in this project. Just don't do that. Also mark the dependency on each of these items. Those are very, very critical because identifying that early allows you to plan the project well. That's one. Second, I don't know, in school days, whenever we used to get the question paper, we used to solve easy questions first and then come to the difficult question. But when you talk about complex project, reverse the order. Define the list of things that are most unknown. Start with the most difficult subject that you want to solve first. Don't start with the easiest one. Our typical habit will be to start the project, I think uh, agile mode, karte hai, sprint, karte hai. we we'll want to start that. No, don't do that. In a complex project, reverse the order. Take a difficult problem to start with, right? Third thing, which is very important, is to find out which is the longest pool. In a project, you will find out that this aspect is longest, right? So if you make this list, the next step that you have to do is there's a problem space and there's a solution space, right? We have a tendency to jump onto the solution faster. Never do that. Never do that. Be in the problem space. In Tally, we, like somebody was talking about cybersecurity a couple of sessions back, we spend time on security. We spend so deep, talk about security, talk about identity, talk about access, talk about what all situation can happen, what hard disk has crash. Talk about all, all situations that can possibly happen. Talk about all problems that can possibly happen. Once you have that list, your idea or your solution, what you are designing, you have an ability to make. Right? So what all we did, we started with the list, right? List of items with dependency. We started with major unknowns. We started with the other aspect of finding out the long pole, and then jumping into the problem space deeper, and then iterating on the solution space. Now, when you're iterating on the solution and the problem, other important aspect, there are two more important aspects to look at. It's for a customer. So make sure you bring in the work of the customer. Make sure customers are feeling the designs are right for them, right? And the second most important factor, and if you all know, I think, is the external stakeholder, like government. So sometimes when you're talking about complex project, you're dealing with government, you're dealing with ecosystem. So how are you aligning with them with respect to ensuring the project will be successful? So when you have done all of that, I think you have much higher, higher confidence to actually start building the project, right? Do it with care when you are building it, so that customer can actually feel and experience that you have defined it with care. And that quality, that high quality, keep on calibrating, checking with the customer as you go in the life cycle. So it's, I'm not talking about project management tools. I'm talking about how you actually go about the journey, right? How do you increase your probability of success when you launch? Because when you are building something which will change the life of the people, you got to increase the probability of success when you launch. So this is the method that is typically used in solving the complex project. And this art and science to me is actually, it's called as craftsmanship. It's not, it's not art and science, it's the craft. So once you have a craft of dealing this complex project, right? what do you have? You have something as an ability to zoom in into a part of a project and zoom out constantly throughout day in, day out. If you do that, you are actually designed for the success. You, if you have that skill that enables you to do that, practice that constantly, it will help you to solve the complex project successfully. Thank you, gentlemen. That's it for my side. I hope it was a useful tip. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we are really sorry that we couldn't give you much time, but thank you so much that you could just uh, wrap it up in 10 minutes. Can we have Mr. Shreesh Agarwal on stage to felicitate him?
A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Thank Mr. You. Rakesh Agarwal. Thank you. Thank you.